So the thing is, you need to get a PCB out, right? But you don't want to be disappointed in the result and even worse, disappoint someone else or your employer or the team with a design that has silly mistakes that you could have avoided if you had known some basic things. So if these are the kind of things you deal with, then you want to especially pay attention to this video. In this video, we're going to reveal five common signal integrity issues that may be plaguing your designs and exactly how to check for and fix them using Altair Polyx. Signal integrity mistake number one is not using enough decoupling capacitors in your designs. Decoupling capacitors help to filter out noise and prevent digital signals from interfering with one another. Without enough decoupling capacitors, your PCB design will be more susceptible to electrical noise, which can lead to data errors and other problems. All right, so signal integrity design mistake number two, not using the correct PCB stack up. Here's the thing. The material and organization of your PCB stack up directly affects trace impedance. This is how we manage to control the impedance of a printed circuit board. And actually, if you're curious about how to do controlled impedance in PCB designs, check out my video on how I show you how to do that. Okay, you can work with your manufacturer to understand which materials, thicknesses, and PCB stackups will give you the right impedance for your design. Signal integrity problem number three, signal reflections. Signal reflections can cause all sorts of problems with your PCB design, including data transmission errors and electrical noise. To avoid signal reflections, you wanna ensure that your end impedance of your trace is matched to the earlier parts of your trace or transmission line, the characteristic impedance. You can do this by using terminating resistor and capacitors to terminate your transmission line properly. Signal integrity problem number four, not understanding the signal return path and how to optimize it. So another one of the most common signal integrity issues to deal with is not understanding the signal return path and how to optimize it. The signal return path is normally assumed to be the path that the signal travels from the source to the destination in some direction that you draw some imaginary place but it's important to understand how the signal path works in order to optimize it for your design. So how do the signal return paths actually work? Well, in low speed signals, the signal return path tends to follow the path of least resistance. This means that the path might not directly be underneath the signal trace. Okay, but for high speed signals about one gigahertz and higher, the signal return path tends to flow directly underneath the signal trace because this happens through displacement current immediately underneath the signal being propagated. Now, this is also because it's following the path of lowest impedance, whereas low speed signals also follow the path of lowest impedance, but the uh, L and the C impedances are negligible. That's why it follows the path of least resistance. Quick note, if the signal return path goes over a gap, it will find its own path of least impedance, which will likely cause electromagnetic interference problems. So how do we avoid this problem? Well, you wanna route being mindful of the return paths. So route your traces orthogonally across one another among your adjacent PCB layers. Or you can use the best way to manage signal return paths, and that's to place an adjacent plane above or below the signal trace within the printed circuit board stack up. So always be mindful of your signal path and your signal return path and plan accordingly. Proper PCB stack up is your friend. So the last problem that you can encounter in signal integrity or mistake is not simulating the design before sending it to manufacturing. Okay, so to avoid making any mistakes in your design, it's important to simulate your design before manufacturing or sending it out. This will help you catch any errors and make sure your design is ready for production. Altair Pollux can help you with this by providing an easy to use and accurate simulation tool for all kinds of things in your PCB. Okay, so go ahead and click the link below to learn more about how Pollux can get your design done right the first time. All right, so hopefully you've been keeping track and scoring points. If you got a five out of five, then congratulations. You're likely very seasoned and experienced as a PCB designer, likely an expert.
If you got a 4 out of 5, no worries, you can easily use software like Altair Polyx to make your life easier so that you can get 5 out of 5 results every time. If you got a 3 or lower, then you want to look at two books, Signal Integrity Simplified by Dr. Eric Bogatin and Write the First Time by Lee Ritchie. And if you're a PCB designer looking to level up your skills, but you don't want to spend tons of time researching all the physics behind Signal Integrity, you can take the shortcut and download the Altair Pollux free trial to check out a ton of signal integrity issues immediately. Right, so subscribe to this video if you'd like more content about how to use Altair Pollux to verify the power integrity for your design, the signal integrity, and all kinds of other issues to check for in Altair Pollux.